Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to address you today at this conference focusing on creating balance in a precarious world. This conference comes at a moment when we have been working on many important pieces of legislation to regulate new technologies and the online world in Europe. Almost two weeks ago, I sat through 16 hours of negotiations to conclude the Digital Services Act, which updated the rules governing the online world for the first time in 20 years. A month before, a deal was reached on the Digital Markets Act, which curtails the worst practices of gatekeeper platforms online. And we are currently negotiating the European Parliament's position on the EU's AI Act, and are in the early stages of the Data Act. And Europe is not the only one. Every region is going to legislate. For too many years, innovation and tech companies have been left alone, seeing a special, unique, small parts of the economy. But now they are the economy and must be subject to regulation. What is clear is that every continent will sooner or later come forward with legislation. The question we must face, however, is do we want a digital future that is divided and segmented? Do we want a Chinese internet alongside a European internet, a US internet and an Indonesian internet? Or can we try to bridge divides and come up with common regulations where we maintain common rules among like-minded countries, especially our allies that value free enterprise, free speech and human rights? It should come as, as no surprise that I favor the latter option of working together as much as we can. I am, for instance, one of the biggest supporters of the EU-US Trade and Technology Council, calling for common rule books to be created between the European Union and the United States, especially when it comes to digital. That should be our goal. But we need to make sure that together with our American allies, that negotiations are more than just a talking shop. We need to see concrete results. For the moment, without some type of leadership or joint agreement between the EU and the US, it looks very likely that every region will adopt its own path. The EU cannot be waiting for the US, as we have done exactly that, moved forward with some of the regulations I have mentioned at the beginning of my speech. But that doesn't mean that we must continue down this path we can still come back together, but we need the US to engage. Given the wider political reality in Washington, however, is this even possible? In a theory, there is no reason Democrats and Republicans cannot come to some type of compromise on the digital regulation that promotes business growth and at the same time protects against the worst of digitalization. But looking from the outside, is it hard to see how this is possible at this moment? Nevertheless, there is a lot that the US administration can do under existing laws. And I hope that they will actively engage with European regulators on coming to common agreements and mutual understandings. The longer we wait to engage, the harder it will be to bridge current divisions. I have focused a lot of this intervention on the EU-US cooperation, but like-minded countries doesn't mean just the US anymore. The digital world includes other democracies, such as Japan, South Korea, India. In this regard, it is just as important to ensure that these countries are part of this global dialogue and initiatives. We already have adequacy decisions on data protection with South Korea and Japan, as well as comprehensive free trade agreements, and we should go further on these. With India, our talks have been frozen for over a decade which is a shame given the huge 
potential in our relations. I was therefore delighted that last week the EU and India decided to launch our very own Trade and Technology Council to step up our strategic cooperation. Given India's traditionally more protectionist stance, this is no small feat, but clearly it will not be easy. This brings me finally to the issue of protectionism more broadly. We must put as much effort as possible to make such dialogues lead to concrete results, because the longer we just stay talking, the harder it is to prevent those who advocate more isolationist ideas and inward-looking policies. We see this in Europe now too, with, for instance, different interpretations on what our strategic autonomy or technological sovereignty means. We see this every day in China and other places. Events like Brexit, Trump's election, and the pandemic has, have served to fan the fires of protectionism globally. So now more than ever, we, policymakers, industry, citizens, must continue to be a voice for an open digital world based on a cooperation between nations. For me, this is the only way we can achieve a balance in the precursorous world of today. I'd like to thank the organizers of this conference for inviting me to contribute to this important discussion and look forward to hearing the outcomes from the panels.